Hi there and welcome to a new video. In this one we are going to be discussing collision objects in Godot, okay? And actually I'm going to be demonstrating this with a practical example, okay? With this game that we have in which, for example, we have the ground that has collisions, the player that as well has collisions, uh, the coins, uh, the vehicles, etc. that I can collide with. And well, basically all these things use different collision objects. So we're going to be learning all this together with this real game. So let's just start off with the very basic. So basically, which are the collision objects that we have? If we want to add a new node, we will find this collision object, okay? Which is an abstract base class for 2D physics objects. Um, we're not going to dig deep into what an abstract class is. We can just say that uh, for collision objects, we have an area 2D and we also have a, a three or well, even more types of physics bodies, okay? And all these have their pretty brief uh, description uh, over here, okay? With a, a tiny information or, or the core information about them. So instead of uh, just uh, going through each of them, because there, there are even like subcategories of each of them, I will, I have actually in this game used, I believe, most of them. Um, so we'll actually go through uh, exactly like that. So for example, as we have checked over here, we have what is called a character body. And these are types of bodies, okay, um, that first of all do have physics. So if you want to have a character that you're going to be moving it with a script with basically input, for example, or something like that, and you also want it to react to physics, actually those physics are uh, optional, um, then, well, this character body is going to be uh, something that you are going to be quite likely to be using. In this case, why did I chose my player to use a character body? Because um, basically character bodies are the easiest way to move a, a, any node with a script. As you can see in the physics process function, okay, because remember that this body has physics inside, so uh, it is going to react to a physics environment, as we are going to be seeing in a second. Uh, so basically it has some built-in functions that other nodes do not have, such as is on floor, so we're going to quickly be able to know if a node is on the floor and if it's not well then we apply gravity for example and well as you can see everything is done with the with this velocity parameter okay that is basically inside of it uh, like internally in the character body and then we apply this velocity with move and slide so it is quite straightforward to move this so to conclude whenever you want to create any kind of character that you want to move intern uh, internally in a script and you also want to add some kind of physics to it, at least pretty basic physics, you sh should use a character body 2D. Now, note here the first difference with the character body and the uh, reshape body. Because this is moved by a physics simulation, but not by a script, okay? So, even though I believe that we would be able to achieve a similar result with an, an, a reshape body 2D or even an area 2D, well, the most straightforward and easiest way would be this one. Maybe you would use a reshit body, okay, if you wanted to create, I know, a ball that would be bouncing around the screen or, or something that ha like, like highly relies on physics, okay? If you have an Angry Birds game or something like that, maybe a reshit body would be the best choice. But well, in most general cases where you don't have a physics-based game, you are not very likely to be using reshit bodies to this. And the next type, okay, okay, that we're going to be checking out is basically the area, okay? And the area is quite simple. It's the easiest one and probably the, the one that you will use the most. And the area today is basically going to be used for those objects that you want to be able to collide with, okay? Um, so, for example, here I use this node for the vehicle and the coin, okay? As you can see, vehicle, area 2D, coin, area 2D, and well, the hierarchy is quite similar. They have both a sprite and a collision shape, as you can see. And basically, the main advantage of these areas to this is that they actually provide signals that we can listen to or connect to in order to uh, handle collisions. Because if we go to the character body, it is mentioned nowhere the fact that it can actually like detect collisions or something like that. It is only mentioned here in the area to the none of these actually like talk a lot about collisions. And in reality, if we select a character body and go to node and we go to the signals, we have like no way of actually detecting collisions with these objects. Whereas areas to this have like here, lots of things that we can connect to in order to detect collision with mostly anything. As a result, for example, here in the vehicle, I have connected 
well, not right here because of the of the game logic, but over here I have connected the on-body enter signal of the vehicle, which would be exactly this one, okay? And then, well, I'm detecting here directly the collision with the player. But in reality, in a simpler game or in other game architecture, what you would do is basically connect this directly here to this script, okay? And do whatever you want uh, over here. So as you can see, the, the handling of collisions is super super simple with areas to this and that that is the main functionality you can still move these areas okay using the the position basically the transform you could still once again add gravity and create a player quite similar to what we have over here but it would take a maybe some more time or it will be more difficult because yes what you are seeing is that maybe you can achieve the exact same result with different types of, of bodies or areas or whatever but well the thing is uh, which is the most appropriate one for the exact task that you want to do. In this case, if I created this vehicle as a character body 2D, then detecting the collision with the player would be quite, quite uh, complicated, since both so, since the player and the vehicle would be two character bodies and they have no actual way of detecting collisions at least quite easily, well, then it would be quite difficult to actually get that functionality done. Now, the next one that I want to show you, I will go here to the main scene, is basically the um, sta static body and the name itself is quite self-explanatory okay if we go to static body this is basically a body that can't be moved by external forces so basically it will always stay there no matter what it will not be affected by gravity it will not be affected by other forces so in this case i use this for the road okay because basically the road it is, is not going to be moved by any kind of force, it will always be in the exact same place. As you can see, it doesn't even have a script uh, attached to it, it is basically the static body with the corresponding sprite and collision shape, nothing else. So well, in this case, as I just wanted to create a ground, okay, whenever you want to create a ground, a roof, a wall or something like that, a static body is probably the best choice. Because, for example, I want to quickly show you what would happen if now I made this row instead of a static body, an area 2D, for example. So if I made this an area 2D, what's going to happen is that the player should literally pass through, okay? It is not going to, like, stay on this collision shape. The collision will still be triggered over here in the corresponding signals, but it is not going to stop the player uh, from falling. So if we play... As you can see, the player is right there like like falling and actually here it is not completely leaving the screen just because its position is being clamped okay but if in reality i go over here and i disable here the clamp of the player you will see that it should basically uh, fall down okay there we have it because it is not like solid the the collider that it has let's say so that's why exactly here i believe that the only body that we can technically use is exactly this one a static body Lastly, I want to uh, quickly go over the uh, rigid body to this, so I will just add it over here so that we can at least see uh, some stuff of it. First of all, it has uh, some mass, so for, for, of course, let's say the heavier the object is, is um, well, the more gravity it will have, basically, the faster it will fall to the ground, as in real life, for example. You also have a physics material override, so you can create a new one and uh, select here your friction, your rough, your bounciness, etc., and more stuff. Actually, the rigid body could be a body completely explained in its own video, that's why I'm not touching it a lot. Because it is also used in a lot of like pretty specific situations, so it's not something that you will use all the time or in every single game. Um, but well, probably those are the most important settings, you can also toggle the gravity. But once again, here the rigid body can, um, cannot detect like the collisions with everything, it can detect the collisions with bodies. So what is a body exactly? These things that these nodes that have the body word inside of it, a static body, a character body, or a others rigid bodies. Okay, but it cannot detect collisions with other areas. You can still detect the collision with a rigid body, but from an area to the and from the body entered signal. Okay. So well, once again, um, whenever you really want to like to handle collisions and make it quite easy and quite expandable. Uh, I do tend to use areas to this. So well, this is all uh, for this video. Uh, I just want to do a, a pretty quick uh, wrap up because I know it is a lot of information. So basically use static bodies for stuff that is not moved by external forces, things that will always stay in the exact same position, such as walls, 
ground, roofs, etc. And you, by the way, have this animatable body. But well, this is for, for example, if you have a platform that moves around because when it is moved manually uh, through a script or, or something like that, uh, it is going to affect other bodies in its path and this one doesn't. But well, once again, quite specific, the functionality. That's why I didn't, went, I didn't want to go in depth. Then use character bodies whenever you want to have a node that you are going to be moving by script. And take into account that I only... At least me personally tend to use character bodies when I'm actually creating, for example, a player uh, or an enemy, okay, or something like that, or actually just mainly a player because it makes the the movement much easier to code than with other nodes because of the thing of velocity and move and slide that we have discussed. And I don't really tend to use them because I cannot detect collisions directly from this node. Um, but it is still quite useful because it does have a 2D physics. So in some specific games where you do need a body to react to physics well character bodies is, are going to be quite useful as well as rigid bodies um that these ones aren't meant like um to be characters that you move uh, with a script itself such as a player an enemy or something like that but more because of physics simulation i don't know a ball uh, something that uh, you touch it and it, it it flies or something like that i don't know something that has friction, that has bounciness, etc. Once again, quite specific here, the functionality it is not something that you will use all the time or in every single game, just in pretty specific uh, cases. And lastly, the right 2D, that is the one that I use the most, uh, is basically um, a type of collider that every single object will pass through, okay, because it doesn't have physics as character bodies or racial bodies, so it will basically pass through. Uh, as we have seen with the example of the ground. So you would use this area to denote whenever you just want an object to be able to easily detect collisions with others. So well, this is all for this video and I hope that you liked it. If you are serious about leveling up your Godot skills, check out my course. In less than 6 hours, you'll master Godot fundamentals while building this amazing project. Links in the description. See you there.